Hi everybody, this is Bentley the Compost Guy Christy here and in this video I'm going to be repotting a philodendron plant and I'm going to be using some of this vermicompost that I harvested in a recent worm in video. If any of you have been watching my worm in overfeeding challenge video series you'll know that in my last video I finally harvested some material out of the bottom of the system. Now I actually, after the video was over, I actually uh, harvested a bunch more. So it's a fairly substantial amount of, of vermicompost in this container here and it's really really nice stuff. I stopped harvesting once I hit a zone where I, I saw a few worms starting to drop down and all of it looks really really good. I removed the uh, handful of adult worms that I ended up finding and other than that it, it, it looks great. I think there may be some cocoons in there and maybe the odd baby worm but really really not a whole lot of, uh, of worm population and that sort of, that sort of idea. Alright so <clears throat> the plant here is as mentioned it's a philodendron and this believe it or not this sad looking thing I should mention it was just recently watered. It was in need of water, so don't don't be fooled into thinking that uh, this was just a really really terrible plant to start out with. Um, it's, it wasn't in the greatest of shape, but generally speaking, it's just because it's gone a while between waterings, and it is now nicely watered. I originally bought this plant, believe it or not, for a Valentine's present. I'm not big on uh, cut flowers, as my wife will tell you with maybe a hint of bitterness in her voice but anyway I thought it might be a little bit creative to buy this plant uh, not this, this year but the, the previous year and at the time it had these beautiful red heart shaped flowers or inflorescences or whatever you want to call them I think spathe might be the technical term but anyway it just looked like nice little hearts and me being the cheesy guy that I am I just thought that might be a, a nice living present to a giver. But anyway, I've kind of let this thing go downhill and she likes to tease me about it on occasion. So my goal here is to see what I can do to bring this thing back to uh, good form. And part of the reason I wanted to do this, I wanted to put this stuff to the test for starters, but one of my earliest experiences with vermicompost was actually with one of the larger philodendrons, I believe it was Monstera plant, and it was it was about actually this size when I started, but I took some material that was quite similar to this and just put it down in the bottom of, of the uh, pot, I, I transferred it to a bigger pot, and I was absolutely blown away with the results, and that was probably the earliest experience that I've had of just witnessing firsthand what vermicompost can do for plants and not only that but the fact that you don't have to put a whole lot into a pot to uh, see some pretty serious results. So what I'm going to do is I have a, a deeper pot here it's not huge in comparison to that one but it's it's certainly dig, uh, bigger and deeper so this should work out quite well all I'm going to do is, I'm not going to overdo it with the vermicompost. I should mention it's some wet peat moss down in the bottom. And I brought some peat moss, moistened peat moss up just to fill in the gaps. But what I'll start by doing is simply spooning some vermicompost down into the bottom of this pot. You want to get it down in the root zone where it's really going to have the, the, best, the best results. And one of the things is that uh, academic research, academic studies have shown that fairly small amounts of vermicompost can have pretty, pretty significant results. I think uh, you know, Dr. Edwards is, is the guy who's, who's led a lot of this research out of Ohio State University. And I seem to recall that percentages as low as 5% of the potting mix were shown to have a significant impact. And in those studies, I should mention that in those studies, the plants were provided with their full 
requirement of fertilizers. They were actually fertilized with inorgan inorganic fertilizers. So it wasn't about the fertilizer value that they were trying to determine. They were trying to see what above and beyond pure fertilizer is going on here. And, and the great thing was that they were discovering that these low percentages of material can have a very, very uh, impressive result. So in light of that, I, like I said, I'm going to not add all that much. I've just sort of added a little bit down at the bottom there. I'm going to lift this plant, get a little one hand show here. And I think that looks like a pretty good level. We still have some space at the top. And I'm probably just going to spoon in a little bit more just to go down around the sides a bit. So in terms of percentage, I don't really know what we're looking at here, but definitely far less than 50%, I would think, because there was already a pretty serious root ball with the plant. And then there was the peat moss at the bottom, and I'm going to add some more peat moss at the top as well. Okay, I just want to get a little bit more down around the sides. And what, one thing, other thing to mention, the academic research is actually, they've been trying to figure out what exactly it is that is leading to this, these amazing sort of benefits of this material. And I guess that's sort of one of the things they've had a bit of trouble nailing down. And the last I checked, I, I'm sure there's probably newer research that I haven't, haven't read, but... It seemed to be a microbe. There's lots of beneficial microbes, that's for sure. But they seem to think that there were some potential growth promoters and things like that, that that could be present in the material. And these are probably compounds that are produced by these beneficial microbes. And one of the other great things about vermicompost is as it goes through the, as the material goes through the worm digestive system, not only is it getting absolutely coated with this massive population of, of beneficial microbes, but it's, it's essentially becoming encased in a bit of a mucus sort of coating. So it almost adds a bit of a time release kind of a quality to it. So your plants can benefit from the material over time. All right, so that's it for vermicompost. And yeah, again, I'm not sure 100%, probably 30%, I would think, maybe 40% at the most, if, if that. Just going to top it up with the peat moss. These philodendrons do quite nicely in a peat type of soil mix. It's because they're, uh, yeah, I, think they, I think they can do pretty well in a sort of acidic type of environment, like in the jungle, jungles where they come from. All right, so that's basically it. So, yeah, I don't have any high aspirations. That, that actually is a, a sunburn, believe it or not. I put it outside on my deck, I think it was last summer, and it didn't do too well. But anyway, I'm not 100% sure what we're going to get, what's going to happen with this uh, philodendron, but I'm hopeful that the vermicompost is going to make this plant look a lot nicer so that I can get back into uh, my wife's good books and yeah everything will be everything will be hunky dory. Alright so thanks for tuning in. I'll certainly be making some update videos. Once again this is Bentley the Compost Guy Christy and I'll see you next time.